Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Emily Davis joining us again here as the founder and lead nutritionist from Whole Essentials Nutrition. Welcome back to the show. How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm so good. How are you? I'm great. Excited to have you back. Uh, and for those of you that may not know Miss Emily, you're going to learn a lot about her today. And we're going to talk about some great stuff. I'm excited she sent me a link um, to what we're talking about. And boy, oh boy, she has a great uh, show in store for us because we're going to get into the nitty and gritty of gut health and what that is. Uh, before we go down that path, please tell us a little bit about what you do as a holistic gut health nutritionist, Emily. Yeah, thank you. So I've been in private practice for coming up on six years. And as a holistic gut health nutritionist, I work with uh, people who, number one, they want a natural solution, right, C to control their their symptoms or just their health overall. Um, and I primarily work with people who have chronic digestive symptoms and or and or diagnosis. Um, they also might have some mental health challenges. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, there's some skin issues there. Um, and then autoimmune disease. So those four things are, are what I primarily work with. And I help people to, you know, like I say, like, get rid of those symptoms uh, for good, because uh, I'm working from the inside out. So well, wholeessentialsnutrition.com. Is that the best website for you? It is. Yeah, that's a great place to get a hold of me. And also on social media. I know you're active on LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, um, Instagram, uh, Facebook, correct? Instagram, Facebook, yep, Pinterest. I call it Twitter and yeah. it's not Twitter. Uh, do you even use Twitter or X? I don't. Okay. I don't. It's one of those things I've never gotten into. Yeah, that's my least favorite form of social media. <laughs> all right. With all your expertise and, uh, of course, uh, the work you're doing, we've had some great conversations. I hope people are able to catch up on some of your, your uh, earlier broadcasts. And for today, we're going to dive into gut health, right? And could you share a little bit about, um, you know, what exactly this is? You hear the term all the time. What is gut health? <laughs> you do you? Yeah, I mean, luckily, I do think people hear that phrase. And they're at least aware that it's important, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think all of us in this field have, have done some good work uh, to Yeah, pe people are just more aware for sure than they were four so years ago when I really started uh, working primarily with gut health. So um, I'm sharing a resource today and I just wanted, to, you know, those that are listening to know. Uh, so on my website, in my kind of main menu bar at the top is going to be uh, in big, bold letters, just those, the term gut health. So when you click on that, this is new. This is a new resource okay. that sure. I um, have been working on and it's now live and it has a lot of really good, what I'm hoping is basic information about gut health, but also some, you know, obviously some specifics too, but all sorts of information is found on this page, which, um, yeah, I was thinking it, it might be kind of fun to go through some of this with everybody today. So that's, that's where you can find it. There really is more information than we could even talk about in 10 podcast episodes. So like, we're, we're not going to even scratch the surface probably, but again, like this is where you can find the information and where I'm referencing uh, awesome. what we're talking about today. Awesome. Awesome. I'm here. I'm all in digesting in our system. And what does this mean? Because we all want better health in general, let alone better gut health, right? So could you get in depth a little bit more about um, this whole concept of gut health for us? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I think it's start, let's, you tell me, um, but I think maybe a good place to start would be there's um, kind of towards the top of this page again, that I, I mentioned I'm referencing is a section on factors influencing gut health. And I think yep. it makes sense to start there. Perfect. So yeah, again, it's like, if you don't know anything about gut health, this, this is a good episode for you, because hopefully, you know, I'm, I'm going to talk about a couple of things. And so um, 
things that influence our gut health, and this is on a day to day basis, right? So just like you go and get a blood test, it's giving you information about whatever in your body, right? That given day, that given time, same thing with the stool test that I used. It is a point in time. It is where, you know, someone's gut health is right now, but that changes. And even, even if, you know, I work with someone, let's say for six months, that's the length of my program and I get them, you know, symptoms resolved and re on their way, right? They're feeling great. Things can change. Um, and so these are some of the things that influence our gut health, like I say, on a, on a daily basis. So we're talking about things like, chronic stress, cigarette smoking, or even just like mm -hmm. being exposed to cigarette smoking, even if you yep. don't smoke, so, right? Secondhand. Uh, we're talking about where um, we get infections. Um, we don't always have control over that. So just being um, exposed to different uh, bacteria, viruses, parasites, et cetera. So infections. I love the pictures, by the way, that go along with this. I hope you guys are following along. If not, don't forget wholeessentialsnutrition.com. I love it. I love it. Go ahead. I know. I have, I have a great team um, that helped put this together. It's so great. yeah, infections, we're also exposed to a variety of what we just call toxins um, in our air, in our homes, in our, right? Like just in our environment. So again, like some of those things we have control over and some we don't. Um, but we, we are exposed medications. Those can be prescribed. They can be over the counter. So, so both of those things Poor diet influences our gut health. Um, and that's, that's really, you know, the nutritionist in me wants to stop and like point out, like when I say poor diet, we're really talking about like two things, both uh, inflammatory foods mm -hmm. and lack of, uh, nutrient dense foods is how I would describe it. So like lack of fiber, lack of vitamins, lack of minerals, each of those things, uh, have an effect on our gut health in, in different ways. Uh, alcohol, drinking alcohol, um, even, even a little bit, uh, it's gonna, you know, everyone's a little bit different, but even a little bit of alcohol can, can really cause some harm, uh, exercise, um, or lack thereof antibiotics. So even if you're someone who takes an antibiotic, maybe as infrequently as once a year, that's having a, actually a really profound impact on your on your gut. Um, I've got a social post that I'm putting up not too long to, to show people what the effect of antibiotics has on our good bacteria. Okay. Um, low stomach acid. And this is not something that re people really think about, or even you, you don't, you don't get low stomach acid by like doing any one thing. It's, it's also kind of like this uh, cumulative effect, um, but low stomach acid can definitely affect our gut health and then genetics, right? Like if any of you have heard of, oh, there's, there's a term that I'm going to forget, but most of our health really has to do with like 90% our choices and our exposure and 10% of it is our genetics. So genetics are definitely there and they play a role, but all of those other things that I just talked about have a much yeah. bigger impact. Okay. So yeah, when we think about all of those things together, right? Like that's, that's influencing our gut. It's also inf influencing our overall health, right? We could talk about a couple of other things too, but it's, it's inflammation in general, mm -hmm. uh, you know, is at the, at the heart of that. And as I'm just kind of scrolling down this page that we've been referencing um, that can be found on my website, the, the next kind of talking point, all of that leads to not just leaky gut, but definitely leaky gut. So again, I feel like that's a term a lot of people have heard and, and we can kind of talk more about what, what that actually is and what that means. Cause that, that is a big part of um, what can go wrong in somebody's gut. Yeah. You know, I've always heard of it and I was always confused. I, 
I, I know what it is now, but I was thinking like, what does it mean your gut's leaking? I don't get it. Yes. Could you share yes. what it really is? <laughs> yeah. And, and I think it's helpful again, like those that are listening, please go to my website. Cause there's, there's a, a visual, there's an image here that I think helps, uh, helps you see what is happening. Cause really it's exactly what it sounds like. Your intestinal lining is one cell layer thick. And what happens with leaky gut is that what those one cells that are, you know, linked uh, together, they come apart and they shouldn't do that. So what the problem is, all of those things that are uh, should be contained within our digestive system. So food, those medications that I talked about, um, toxins that are in our water and our food and the earth, et cetera, right? Like all of that really is coming through our digestive tract and it should be contained there. Um, so the problem with leaky gut is, so those cells come apart and then what should be contained in the digestive tract is now leaking through into the bloodstream. So okay. that's the problem. And when it does that, our immune system is essentially uh, coming across these say food particles. Um, and they're, again, they should not be in the bloodstream. So one kind of tall tale sign of leaky gut is when someone says, you know, I never really used to be sensitive to like this food or that food, but now I am. Um, and the reason is because those food particles are leaking through into the bloodstream. Okay. Your immune system is identifying them as a, a foreign invader. And that's, mm. that's what our immune system is meant to do, right? So they're, it's doing its job. Um, but the problem is leaky gut. It's not the immune system per se. Got did I, it. did I explain that? Well, yeah, I got the, I get the visual and I hope some people are doing it too with the bloodstream, the membrane and how it's uh faulty there in the middle. <laughs> yes. Yes. See, yeah. really, as everyone learns differently, right? Some people yeah. listen visually, but uh, we got it. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So that really is the problem um, and, and where it comes from. And then, and then kind of like the bigger picture or uh, consequence of that is um, I, I think I do. Yeah. So below that picture is a list of these symptoms, you know, how, how that manifests in the body then can be anything from bloating to those food statistics that I mentioned, it can affect your metabolism and your thyroid. Mm -hmm. uh, people can feel like tired and fatigued. You can get joint pain, headaches, uh, skin issues often kind of oftentimes come from like a leaky gut, not other things too in the gut, but sometimes it is specifically from leaky gut. Uh, so if you've got rosacea, eczema, acne, and especially if like nothing's working, it's, you know, it's when I always tell people like, it's time to look at your gut. Um, and weight gain and, and many more, many, many more, uh, you know, symptoms come from leaky gut, but those are just kind of, um, the most common. So, right. Some of those symptoms can certainly be coming from other problems as well, but that, uh, you know, like I say, like leaky gut is oftentimes one of those causes. Got it. So, All right. Yeah, right. Like, hopefully, you know, big picture, it's like, what are we thinking about to watch out for and improve just in our life to improve gut health? What kind of symptoms are we like thinking of to to know maybe if our, our gut, you know, could use a little tune up? Mm -hmm. um, hope, hopefully, like laid the, the foundation for everybody there. Um, you know, and then, uh, again, as I'm kind of moving through um, this resource. Um, first and foremost, I'm a nutritionist, right? So that's why I love, honestly, like the combination of being a gut health nutritionist, there's, there's so much that I can do with both. And so the role of nutrition and gut health really is, it's huge, uh, both in restoring gut health, you know, uh, when I, someone new comes to me and they've got all of these symptoms. It, like I've mentioned, it could be digestive. Mm -hmm. could be some of those things that I just mentioned, which seem kind of like 
vague and generic, right? But like overall, I think like you're not feeling well, right? Someone's not feeling well. So it could be any and all of those things, but food is such a big player with both restoring their gut health and then teaching someone how to then maintain, uh, you know, what we've done and put in those, um, kind of preventative measures, right. To, to, to keep it up. Um, so when we're talking nutrition, um, and, and Jill stop me at any point, <laughs> you tell me oh. when we need to take a break or anything. Okay. We're good. We're good. Go ahead. So nutrition and gut health. I mean, again, it's like, we're, I'm, I'm definitely thinking about specific foods. I mentioned there definitely are foods that I want people to moderate. There might be some foods that we have to avoid altogether. Um, and the reason behind all of that always is to reduce inflammation. And that's going to be, that's going to look a little bit different for each person. Um, there are some commonalities. So I'm, I'm both thinking about reducing inflammation by avoiding certain foods. And I mentioned earlier in the episode, thinking about um, including a lot of foods actually that most people don't eat very often. So, right. It's both avoiding some things to reduce inflammation in the body and focusing on nutrient density. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's, it's both of those things. Um, Food is information. This, this little section again, on this page that I'm referencing on my website is, you know, I, I really think of food as either like helping or hurting. And I talked a little bit about our genetics, right. And again, like genetics definitely play a role and food is either like, uh, turning on some of those, um, what, how do I want to say it? Um, turning on some of those like genetic predispositions, Mm -hmm. um, or it's keeping them turned suppressed. Yeah. 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 I see what you mean. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. One way or the other. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I, I, and and maybe, you know, someone can argue that it's not that simple, but I, I really think it's that simple. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, you know, one thing I, I always teach too, is I, you know, I'm a big believer in moderation and, you know, balance and all things. So I, I pretty much teach a 80, 20, 90, 10 kind of diet, right. Where like some of those foods that we all love and they're part of like our modern uh, buffet, <laughs> if you <Yep>. will, <laughs> you know, like they can be part of a healthy balanced diet. Right. So I, I am not someone that says, you know, whatever it is, your thing is like, you can't have it anymore. And also sometimes the people that I work with, you know, they, they find that maybe that food they thought they loved, uh, that doesn't make them feel very good. Like it's not worth it anymore. Right. I, I definitely think like people get to a place where like, they're feeling so good some of those choices just don't make sense for them anymore but more or less right like food is medicine we're either choosing choosing health or we're or we're not um so in uh you know kind of my um food is medicine eating principles that i have listed here again like you can find this resource on my website click on gut health at the top um, are things like eat real food. So, you know, I mentioned the 90, 10, the 80, 20 rule. It really is a huge part of what, where the science is and also what I believe. Um, so remind us at this time, how we can contact that? you. Say that again, Emily Davis, whole essentials, nutrition.com. Just want to put plug that in. Keep going. Keep going. Thank you. Thank you. On a roll. You're welcome. I'm scrolling (laughs) down with you here, but my computer's stuck. (laughs) So yeah, 90, 10, 80, 20, you know, if if you, if that resonates with you, right, we'd probably be a good fit. Um, These quote unquote health foods that so many companies are marketing and so many people really out there are purchasing and using, and I'm talking about things like 
protein powder and all manner of like other supplements, right? Like that's not food. Uh, and and it, it's really not what we were meant to eat. And it, it's not going to do your body good, not in the long run. So big believer in eating real food. And I help people do just that. Um, I kind of already talked about like food is information, right? Like mm -hmm. we're either choices that steer us towards health or away from it. Yep. Uh, the life in food gives us life. Um, right. So if, if we're consuming a lot of those processed convenience and, and I really do lump like a lot of those protein bars, protein powders, and, and I'm picking on protein because there's so many, I don't know why people are obsessed with it, but they are. Um, but right. Like just any and all of those kinds of convenience health foods, uh, it's again, just, it's, it's not what we're meant to be eating. Eat a rainbow. Um, so my recommendation here is seven to 12 servings of colorful plant foods a day. Mm -hmm. There are not many people I know that, that get that. Um, so even if you, you know, as you're listening to this, that sounds overwhelming. This seems out of reach. Start with one, start with two, right? Wherever you're at, add one is what I would say. But that is that is ideal. Seven to 12 servings of colorful plant foods a day. Uh, that is giving us the range of nutrients and vitamins and minerals and protein and right all the things that we need. So yeah, big believer in, like I say, nutrition as a way to both restore gut health and a way to maintain gut health. Um, and then, it, you know, it, it's working on all of those other uh, areas of health that we've talked about. So how am I doing on time? You're doing well. We have five minutes left. Keep going. Okay. okay. So I'm, I'm scrolling again through this reference page a little bit, and I'm going to, there really, there's so much information in here. There's there's no way we could really get through it, but I'm just going to highlight. There's a couple of um, blogs on specific topics, and I'm going to jump down to, I've mentioned a couple symptoms of leaky gut. Okay. I'm going to mention, um, to, to wrap up today, a couple of symptoms to like be looking out for, um, and maybe you're going to recognize um, as uh, symptoms of just like poor gut health in general, that could be digestive skin, uh, medication kind of related, um, and then just kind of overall well being is how I've laid it out on on the page here. So when we're talking about digestive symptoms of like poor gut health, that can be um, things like burping, bloating, gas right after a meal. Mm -hmm. Um, more than say, well, I'll just, I, <laughs> I had this conversation at a dinner party of all places not long ago. Um, and so I'll just throw this out like 10 to 12 times a day is normal to, for lack of a better term, pass gas. Okay. And that's, and that's burping, you know, so kind of coming up through the esophagus yep. in the mouth or it's the other way, right? 10 yep. to 12. That's normal. Okay. You're experiencing more than that. It's not so normal. Okay. So there's that. <laughs> uh, if you kind of have that sensation of food sitting in your stomach or you get like an upset stomach, also like acid reflux, heartburn, right? Any and all of those kinds of things are, they're a sign that, that something's not quite right, right? In your gut. And then we, you know, uh, we can talk about things like constipation, diarrhea, loose stools, um, undigested food in your stool. So though, you know, those hopefully daily bowel movements are something also to look for there. Um, and again, on, on my website, on, on this resource page is a visual of what like a healthy poop should look like. So when I say constipation and diarrhea or loose stools, like none of that is, none of that's normal. None of that's healthy. So, you know, all of those things give, give you information. 
skin or allergy related kind of symptoms could be things like acne, eczema, dry skin, rashes, hives, um, to other things like headaches, brain fog, coughing all the time, uh, joint or muscle pain, mood swings, even those food sensitivities I talked about, all of those are kind of allergy related and or skin issues. Yep. Uh, and oftentimes are tied to the gut. Mm -hmm. Autoimmune disease, I've mentioned, history of antibiotic use, if you use NSAIDs, um, often, um, that's, that's a sign. Um, and also if you're currently taking antacids or you're on what we call a PPI, which is a proton pump inhibitor, that's what it stands for, but essentially it's an acid blocker. If you've been prescribed an acid blocker and you're currently taking it and you've been taking it for more than three months, that's not how it's intended to be used. Okay. So talk to your doctor if you'd like, uh, or you can schedule a discovery call with me. But really, um, that's that's a sign of a chronic issue that's just been left, um, un, you know, not addressed. So that's definitely something that I work on with my clients. And then, you know, one last thing to talk about is like, I uh, trouble losing weight and or gaining weight. I would say I help equally uh, people to gain weight that need to gain and lose to lose, right? Um, that can be a sign of just like things that are off in your gut. If you're always getting sick, um, if you're having recurring any kind of like fungal infection, so that could be nails, skin, vaginal, um, th those are most of the places that people notice like a fungal infection, but all of those things are tied to the gut. So if you hear any of those things, you know, that I just mentioned, um, I will, I would love for you to book a discovery call with me and we can talk a little bit about if, uh, if I'd be a good fit for you. Perfect. Thank you. And how can we contact you? Cause you're right on schedule. Excellent. Okay. So the website really is the best place to connect with me. And I've mentioned scheduling a discovery call. There should be a link pretty close to the top where uh, you can just click the link and schedule right there. Perfect. Thank you so much. And again, all we talked about today is detailed right there as well on the website on the introduction to gut health. Um, page. Uh, there's a lot and uh, there's even more to read about it, how to prevent bloating, what is uh, leaky gut again, uh, root causes of IBS, uh, managing it, holistic nutrition. Yeah, there's a lot of information here and you're always jam-packed your shows with uh, very informative information. And uh, if someone does want to reach out uh, one more time, ladies and gentlemen, go to the website wholeessentialsnutrition.com. Emily Davis is uh, the one in charge here. She's the founder and lead nutritionist, and we're excited to always have her here and be so supportive of uh, those. And it should be, it's not just those, it's everyone. We all need to get work and get started, get tested, and might as well live your best life. And I know you're here to do that. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here and looking forward to, are we on next week? Yes. Yes. I think awesome. we've got a more. Yep. Perfect. Thank Sounds you. good. Thank you so hey. much. We'll talk soon. soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's it's crucial. 
Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.